creative masking effects like the one you just saw are super popular on TikTok and they're really fun effects to use in vlogs as well. In this video, I'm going to show you how to put the effect together in Final Cut Pro, but I'm also going to give you four tips on how to shoot it properly for the best results. I've got my two clips on the timeline here, one where I have a hoodie and jeans on and I walk past this pole and then I come back on the other side. And then I have the second clip where I walk out in these summer clothes, realize it's chilly and then I turn around and run back behind the pole. The first step is to create sync points. So what I'll do is I'll just scrub through on this first clip until I put my foot flat on the other side of the pole and I'll find that same point in this clip where I put my foot flat on the ground on the other side of the pole, right about there. Then I'll lift this clip up on top and I'll sync up those two markers. What I like to do is to set the opacity of this top clip to 50% so that I can see both layers and just make sure that they line up. It doesn't matter that they don't line up here. What's important is that they line up as I walk behind the pole. So right there, that looks pretty good. So I'll set the opacity back to 100% and I'm going to add a shape mask effect. Drag and drop that onto my top clip. And just so we can see what we're doing, I'm going to hide this bottom clip using the shortcut V. What I want to do is make sure that these edges are nice and feathered, right about the thickness of the pole. And I'm going to make sure that this left half of the shot is selected by this mask. I'll re-enable the clip at the bottom and already we have an effect that looks pretty good. Now I've got a straight object like this pole in the middle of the frame so the shape mask works perfectly. If you were walking behind this tree, for example, that's at an angle, you might want to go ahead and use the draw mask and draw your mask around this tree. Then you can match it to any shape you like. Now in this example, once I realize it's chilly and I head back, I go back to the other side and you can see here that the timing doesn't quite line up. I took a bit too long on this bottom clip to come back out the other side. So what I'm going to do is just find a marker right where my head goes behind the pole, about there. I'll hit M to create a marker and I'll hide this top clip and I'll find that same point on this clip. So right about there. So now I need to match up these two markers. So what I'm going to do is just make a little cut here and I'm going to pull this back until those markers sync together. It's helpful to go frame by frame here to see if you need to tweak it any further. I feel like I need to delay me coming out on this side of the pole by a little bit. So I'll just extend this bottom clip by a few frames and I'll go frame by frame again. That's a bit too much. Let's go back a frame or two. Now we do obviously have this jump cut here, which is not noticeable in terms of me being on the left hand side of the frame here because it's covered by this top clip. But if you look closely in the background, when we go frame by frame, there's a car over here that just suddenly sort of jumps forward. To fix that, I'll just head over to the transitions browser and I will search for flow. It's a built-in transition that comes with Final Cut Pro and it just analyzes those frames to create new frames, which will help to smooth out that car just appearing there. Lastly, I'll extend this clip out a little bit and you'll see what'll happen is when I walk back in front of the pole, I'm now disappearing here. So before I get to the front of the pole, I want to make sure I trim the shot and I can't just do a hard cut here because if you look at the shadow on the tree, you'll see how that jumps because time has passed. So all I need to do is create a nice long cross dissolve by simply selecting the end of the clip and hitting Command T. And now when that shadow of the tree fades out, it's a lot less noticeable. I'll move my playhead to the end where I walk out of the frame. That's where I want to cut this clip. And then we'll start the clip over here. I'll trim both of these clips to the same point. And then lastly, add some sound effects. And here is the final result one more time. To make the masking process easier, make sure that you use a tripod so that your clips line up perfectly. You don't want your white balance to change between shots either, so make sure you have a custom white balance set like daylight and avoid using an auto white balance. That's going to be your best bet to make sure that the color matches between all of your shots. For the same reason, you want to make sure you have your camera set to manual focus so that the depth of field is the same between shots. 
Before I mention the last tip, a quick thank you to Carl for requesting this tutorial on a previous video. If you guys have any other suggestions for tutorials, please let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, go ahead and follow me on TikTok. I've got a bunch of other fun effects that I'll be posting there. Okay, lastly, it's super important not to let too much time pass between shooting those two clips. If you do, your lighting could change, clouds could develop in the sky, or something else could change that would make the effect less believable. Now that you know how easy it is to create this trending mask effect, it's time to take your masking skills to the next level, so go ahead and watch this video next.